Hey, welcome back to the channel, guys. Glad to have you here, like always. In today's video, we're going to be doing a couple of things a little bit differently. As you can see, this setting is different. I'm not inside of the bird room today to record this video, and the reason being is because as we get closer to the breeding season, that bird room is a complete mess. There's a lot of work that needs to get done in there. I need to pressure wash all the cages, clean a lot of the nest, and just prepare it for the beginning of the season now, which I usually start in October. Also, I haven't been feeling too well. I have kind of a bit of a sore throat, and that's probably why you hear my voice a little bit different, so I'm having to kind of force it, and it uh, hurts a bit, so hopefully that changes within the next couple of days. I start to feel a little bit better, but I couldn't leave you guys without a video. And for today, we're gonna be trying something completely new and different. One of the things that I wanna to try to incorporate into the channel is different types of videos. And today, I'm gonna to try something new. Today, what we're gonna be doing is Bird Fact Sundays or Bird News Sundays. I'm not sure exactly which title to give it yet, but the gist of this new video will be that every single Sunday, I'm gonna release a new video showing you guys some interesting bird facts or some news about birds from all around the world. It could be any topic, you name it. I'll try to find some of the most interesting topics to talk about, and we'll go ahead and discuss that. So let's get started with today's video. We all know that there are large varieties of animals in the world that are venomous, all the way from spiders to snakes and even some mammals like the platypus. But did you know that there is one bird that is also venomous? If you didn't know this, it's probably a big shock or a big surprise to you, just as it was to me when I first read this article. Interestingly enough, my father sent me this article a few days ago while I was sitting here on this couch watching TV, and I couldn't believe it when I first saw it, so I definitely had to read it. And that's what gave me the idea to start this new series and share with you guys some of these interesting articles that I find online. So let's get into this article, and it comes from the Australian Geographic Journal. Um, it's called The Hooded P2 Hui, one of the world's only toxic birds. This is one of the only known birds to be toxic. Its feathers contain one of the most potent toxins known by science. But why? Exploring the Mississippi River with his hunting dogs, Dash, some time in the early 1800s, artist and ornithologist John James Audubon decided to perform a little experiment. According to the Native Americans and some scattered library references, the beautiful green and gold Carolina parakeet that once littered the southeastern United States were deadly toxic. And John had to know for sure. So he caught some by the side of the river, boiled them up, and fed them to his dogs to see what would happen. Was Dash okay? No one knows, but all mentions of her in John's well-kept diary stops dead at this Mississippi meal. So perhaps her fate was sealed when she fed on what could have been the only species of toxic bird in the world. Sadly, the Carolina parakeet has been extinct for almost a century, but another toxic bird lives on. In 1989, Jack Dummerback from California Academy of Science traveled to Papua New Guinea in search of birds of paradise. He strung up numbers of delicate nets between the trees and one day found several striking songbirds tangled in them. They were hooded pituhuis, little black and orange passerines with powerful beaks and dark red eyes. As Jack struggled to free the pituhuis from his nets, they scratched his hand and the cuts hurt more than they should have. He put his fingers in his mouth to dull the pain, but that only made his tongue tingle and burn. When Jack asked the locals if they knew anything about this particular effect, they knew all too well to stay away from the hooded pitui. A rubbish bird, they said, no good for eating. Jack flew some pitui feathers back to the US for further testing and showed them to chemist John Daly at the National Institute of Health. Years earlier, Daly had identified the presence of tracheal toxins, extremely potent neurotoxic steroidal alkaloids that in high doses can lead to paralysis, cardiac arrest, and death in the tiny poison dart frogs of South America. Gram for gram, this is one of the most toxic natural substances known to science. In 1992, Daly found the exact same toxin in the feather fibers of the hooded pitui. 12 years later, with the help of Papua New Guinea locals, Jack discovered that the pituis were getting their tracheal toxins from the small mellorid beetles they fed on. It was a mystery solved, but what drove these birds to pick the highly toxic mellorids as their primary source? 
A tiny defenseless dart frog needed all the help it can get, but a free-flying bird with claws and a powerful beak? Why the hooded P2E ended up toxic is anyone's guess. Alright guys, so that's pretty much it for that article. I'm going to go ahead and list it in the description box of this video if you want to read it for yourself. But as you can see, they discovered this incredibly toxic bird that apparently gets those toxins from the beetle that it eats. And that toxin is then spread throughout its feathers, I guess through the oil glands that the, the birds have. And any animal that decides to eat this bird will ingest that toxin and become ill. As you can see from the example that he gave after catching that bird, he accidentally had a small cut on his hand and it felt like it was stinging. And it was from the toxins of the birds. He ended up licking it and it also made his tongue go numb or um, he started to have that tingly sensation. So. This is something that apparently over time, these birds have developed that due to the insects that they're eating and it could very well help them from predation in Papua New Guinea. I'm not sure what type of predators they might have in that area, but usually with all of these cases where an animal has some sort of venom is to prevent it from being predated by another animal. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed that article. If you did, go ahead to the description box and there you're going to see the link so you can go ahead and read it yourself if you're interested in following up on it. Like always, guys, hope you've enjoyed the video. If you did, remember to hit a thumbs up and um, let me know what you guys think about this new series. If you enjoy it, we'll make it a constant Sunday thing. I hope you all have a wonderful day and we will see each other in the next video. Bye.